Alright, good afternoon, 4.07 in the afternoon. How you doing today? I tell you what, we have a treat for you. We are here with Richard and Laura Labar. They are with the Ennery River Vineyard and Winery. That's right. So uh, we are here today. Certainly hope you're going to uh, get some ideas about uh, owning a winery. <laughs> <laughs> and all the work that it takes. I think that's the thing that we are hearing here today. But Richard, how are you doing today? I'm doing really great. It's really wonderful to be back here in Greenwood. Uh, we have been here uh, three different times for the Festival of Flowers and have enjoyed our uh, being here in Greenwood very, very much each time that we have uh, had our wines for people to sample. Well, you know, everybody likes uh, wine, and of course being able to have uh, taste different ones is always very interesting. But uh, what was your background? Now, you haven't always been a, uh, uh, involved in wine wineries. Well, I think that uh, how I kind of got interested in, in winery, uh, at one time I was a regional director for the Vietnam Veterans of America, and my region was South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee. Small territory. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one, one, I always say one of the, the nicest way to travel on the interstate is going from one winery to another winery. Yes. Uh, it kind of breaks the uh, monotonous of an interstate travel up. And just, just in, in looking at it uh, and talking to the people uh, and just, you know, the people who are in the business seem to really enjoy what they do. Um, and so as a business type person you, you can go to wineries that are off the beaten path and, and there will be people there mm -hmm. uh, enjoying themselves and having been a bartender at my at, at one time in my life I said well, okay this could be kind of a nice little bartender job uh, having you never, thought it was going to be easy is that what you're telling me <laughs> <laughs> having never been a farmer before I have a lot more respect for farmers <laughs> yeah it's a it's a whole different uh, it's wholly different when you're on the other side of the uh, of the making instead of the drinking part. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Well, uh, um, ha having been in the military, I want to thank you for your service to our country. We really appreciate it. I understand you were in Vietnam, uh, what, 1971? Uh, 19, uh, 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 mainly in 1971, yeah. but, but I, I, want, I have to say that I, I was a draftee, uh, but actually it was one of the best things that ever happened to me, and fortunately uh, I came back from Vietnam with uh, everything halfway uh, still there. Yeah. And uh, really, uh, the, the interesting thing about it is that, uh, you know, coming back, you really didn't want anybody to know that you was you know, gone for a year, a year's vacation. And uh, a good friend of mine, David Simpson, uh, uh, we attended the, uh, the dedication of the Vietnam Monument in, in Washington. And I always like to say it was one of the best parties I ever attended. And on our way back, we decided that, uh, you know, if they can do it there, we can do it in South Carolina. And that was the beginning of the uh, Vietnam Monument uh, uh, for South Carolina and Columbia. Wow, wow, that, that, um, wow. That, that is terrific. And of course, we've actually had the moving wall mm -hmm. that they take the Vietnam Wall. We've actually had that right here in Greenwood. So, and and I think a lot of people really, really appreciated the fact that they brought the wall here, albeit it was a smaller one mm -hmm. and everything else. It was a total experience for so many people to see that. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a worthwhile project. Now, um, Robert Livingston, was he involved in that monument? Yes, was he? The Adjutant General, Robert uh, Livingston, didn't, didn't they just finish that Vietnam? Or oh, no, it's, it's been since like 1988. 1988, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the one for 9-11. That's what okay. I was thinking of, that monument mm -hmm. there. So, um, so you did that, and then I guess did you continue to work with the veterans from Vietnam? Uh, basically, uh, you know, we c continue working with them, you know, with, with the Vietnam Veterans of America, and then uh, we reached a point where uh, it, it was time to do something else. And uh, I guess uh, at that time, I was, uh, Laura and I were dating, and uh, we talked about uh, doing a, a vineyard in the winery, and we visited the whole romantic side of life, oh, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we we visit a lot of wineries in uh, North Carolina. Like, uh, North Carolina's got over 100. Good dates, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a lot of wineries in North Carolina and, and Georgia and uh, Virginia. Virginia's got over 200. South Carolina's got 10. Uh, and so we got talk, talking to a lot of people. Took a couple of uh, Saturday classes at Surrey Community College in uh, Yaconville, North Carolina. Uh, did a lot of research on the Internet. Um, had talked to a lot of old farmers who uh, 
knew, knew more about it than I did. My brother, who uh, is from Brooksville, Florida, uh, moved up for a couple of years to help get it started and decided it was too cold up here and moved back to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and none of these farmers said you don't want to do this? Um, I think probably everybody thought we were a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's not the first time that I've been considered crazy. So. <laughs> 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 kind of fits. Kind of fits. Well, I, I tell you what, Laura, how has, uh, Laura, of course, you are uh, Richard's wife, and you live in pros lived in Prosperity. Yes, I've told you, I always wanted to have an address in Prosperity, like 101 Golden Drive, Prosperity, <laughs> South Carolina. Sounds pretty nifty. Yeah. But um, you are a high school teacher. I am. God mm -hmm. bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how... Did you want to build a winery? Did you think this was a great idea? Oh, I did. You know, I loved working outside, and so I was looking at it as a, a fun way just to stay outside all day. Uh, you know, little did I know it would it would be as tough as what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you you one thing that you did though, you kept your day job, correct? Yeah, you're mm -hmm. still you're I'm going still back to I'm going back to school August twelfth. That's uh, August 12th. That's right around the corner, isn't it? Yeah. The kids come back on the 19th. Yeah. Yeah. And what it, what do you actually teach? Computer apps. Computer. Desktop publishing, you know, it's more advanced computer course, but primarily computer apps. Oh. Mostly ninth graders, few 10th, 11th, and 12th. Well, God bless you, like I said. God <laughs> bless you. <laughs> All right. Well, you have had the winery, uh, Richard, for seven years. Is uh, that right? About seven years, right. And this was not an ongoing operation that you bought. You built it from scratch. I understand it was a cow patch. It was, it was basic. <coughs> sorry, it was basically a cow pasture out there, and uh, we pounded every post, planted every plant, and uh, built built the buildings. And uh, you know, we had a lot of help. I mean, I, I'm I, I uh, I'm great at being a cleanup person and a gopher. Right. You know, my expertise beyond that is pretty limited. Uh, so, so we had a lot of help. Uh, a guy named uh, a farmer around us, uh, Larry Cromer, uh, he uh, let us borrow his uh, tractor that had a, a, a post pounder on it to, uh, you know, to put all the posts in the ground sure. and stuff like that. So we, we had a lot of help from a lot of different people. And um, like I said, uh, you know, there, there aren't too many wineries and vineyards in South Carolina. And uh, but although uh, prior to Prohibition. Uh, the Scuppernon wine, uh, which, which is, I guess, you know, some people say that there's a Scuppernon and there's a Muscadine. The Muscadine is a dark one. The Scuppernon is a green one. But actually, a Scuppernon is a Muscadine. It's, it's a, you know, a, a part of the, the Muscadine family. And uh, they, uh, you know, it just it, it grows here. Uh, it uh, does, you know, it, I always like to say that the uh, Muscadine is like kudzu. It will grow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when, when you think about um, the wines, now you, you have told me that most of yours are from the Muscadine grape, and then you import some juice from other areas, is that correct? Yeah, it, it, you know, uh, in, in South Carolina, about the only thing that's going to grow is Muscadine, or it has to have a Muscadine DNA in it. Uh, although uh, We're not going to have the Napa Valleys of, of South Carolina here? Well, you, you know what Napa stands for uh, in, in the South, I presume. Well, yeah, I mean, what, car parts? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a southern girl. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you uh, my, my uh, good friends of ours in uh, Pelzer, uh, Cityscape Winery, they, they have recently planted some uh, Concord, mm -hmm. and, and they seem to be growing. And I'm sure that uh, the people up in Victoria Valley up above uh, in Oconee uh, are, are planting some good because it's a higher elevation. Uh, the one thing nice that we uh, looked at uh, moving to uh, Newberry is that the uh, weather zone uh, that goes through northern Georgia, northern part of South Carolina, North Carolina, Newberry is at the bottom of that weather zone. And so it's a different weather zone than, than Columbia, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, so so the, the weather zone was a nice weather zone for, for growing grapes. Also uh, did, did a lot of research as far as the soil maps and uh, found out that uh, the, the property that we ended up purchasing uh, it's, it's a lot of uh, sandy loam. Uh, it has a few strips clay. of uh, clay in there. Right. So, so it was actually some, and, and, and plus it was a cow pasture, and people across the street had, had <laughs> chicken coops, and they used to dump their chicken manure over. Very fertile soil. Is Very that fertile what you're soil. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, one of the one, one of the one time early on when we were open, um, uh, Larry Cromer and the guy that worked for him uh, were, were spreading some chicken manure next door, 
and it was like on a Friday, and I had to call him up real quick and I said, Larry, can you please do this on a Monday or Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> Not on a Friday, considering that Saturday is our big day. <laughs> right, exactly. That would uh, be an odor one doesn't want to have to uh, smell. No, you don't want that. That, that, would, that would chase people away quickly. <laughs> All right. Well, we are here at the. Uh, we are here with Richard and Laura Labar, and of course, they are owners of the Emory River Vineyard down there in Newberry. So I certainly hope you're going to stay right with us. We're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Well, I don't think they brought us any wine, so I'm fixing a cup of coffee here this afternoon, and it's a mighty fine cup of coffee, I might add, from uh, McDonald's. So there you go. But uh, we're talking with Richard and Laura Labar right here on WCRS. We're talking about their Ennery River Vineyards, and, of course, uh, one of the things that everybody always thinks is that you got to stomp the grapes. I mean, you see the big, you know, the Lucy episode, we were just talking about that. Do you stomp the grapes, Richard? Uh, no. <laughs> Laura, why don't you stomp the grapes? <laughs> well, because it's very difficult to stomp the grapes. It's isn't very it? difficult? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We try. Our machinery. Tried <laughs> we tried it. <laughs> you tried it. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere, folks, this afternoon. We're going to hear some details. <laughs> it's like walking on a cow pad. Yeah, it is. It is. It's very difficult because the grapes want to slide around up underneath your feet, and it's just hard to get that right pressure on that grape to be yeah. able to, you know, for bust it to bust it. open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So you had a big. Uh, that and you, you jumped in there and tried well, to Well, actually, the our grapes. machine temporarily broke down, and since they were still picking, and we wanted to keep processing, right? We said, "Why not?" You know. So <laughs> I put on some boots and started stomping on them, and it was not easy. <laughs> Did you bust your butt? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, now, what time of the year is it as far as grape season as uh, wines? What, what time of year is it right now, Laura? I mean, are well, they right now, come in? Or? Yeah, well, right now, you've got a lot of hard green grapes. We've got some that are turning a little bit. Mm -hmm. The darker grapes are starting to turn a hinge, you know, color. But basically, they won't be fully ripe until September, mid-September. Wow, okay. And then how many bottles, uh, has the rain been good for you or too much rain or what do you, what do you think, Richard? Well, the, uh, the, the rain, you know, we have not turned out our irrigation, uh, sure. which, which we hope, we wish that when we had started out that, that we had had this much rain because when we started out, we, for the first couple of years, we were working out of the back of a pickup truck with a 55 gallon drum going down the road, putting water on the grapes. And, uh, I didn't, didn't listen, design this to I make money, not, did you, Richard? <laughs> I, did, I did not listen to the farmers who said, you need to irrigate, you need to irrigate. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to be a purist like they do in France and not irrigate. Right. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little, a little bit of a learning curve here. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, uh, we do the irrigation. And, uh, you know, as long as it uh, stops raining about three weeks out before you pick, uh, it, 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 it's okay. Uh, unfortunately, I'd heard that the blackberry crop up in Shelby, North Carolina, was pretty pretty devastated with all the rains they had up there because it was their picking time. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, you know, you, you, what you need to do is have it stop raining so that the uh, the, the grapes themselves will uh, increase their, 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 their sugar content. Because if you have a lot of water, of course, it's going to dilute the sugar. So, so you don't want it to rain, or you don't you don't want to irrigate or, or rain about three weeks out. Now, are the grapes any bigger this year because we've had so much rain, or does that not affect it? No? They don't appear to be any bigger, but they, they could, you know, at the, at the end of the growth cycle. They, they may be bigger. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, so um, you deal basically with um, what type of grapes now? Uh, we have the Noble and the Carlos, uh, which are the uh, two, two, supposedly the, the two good good you know, uh, Muscadine grapes for, for making wine. Uh, we, we also have recently, uh, well, not recently, but we planted a, a grapevine called uh, Black Spanish, uh, which is, uh, if, if, if it came through uh, Savannah, it's called Lenore. If it came through Mexico, it's called a Black Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also planted uh, some Herbimont, uh, which, which uh, was discovered actually in the sand hills of Columbia by a guy named Nicholas Herbimont, who was a French professor at, at the college there in Columbia in 1820. Uh, as Laura said, uh, you know, professor there, David Shields, uh, 
a couple of years ago published uh, his essays. And I always like to say that uh, Nicholas Herpetmont back in those days was a, uh, a, a, a quite a good expert viticulturist. Okay. I'm, still, I'm still trying to learn how to be a farmer. Right? Right. Okay. <laughs> but um, didn't you actually, now the grapes weren't actually here though, this type of grape that you're talking about, this guy's grape, correct? Right, yeah. They but had, yeah, over the years they had dug up them to root them. When the grapes started being transported back and forth, they, I guess, used a lot of the Herbermont grape for grafting to save other grapes from diseases. And you, you just uh, got some of this uh, cuttings from Texas, right? From Texas, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're reintroducing a mm -hmm. grape that was actually from here back in South Carolina. And that's yeah. That's well, I always like to say that uh, you know when when the uh, the Europeans came over to America, they brought our little diseases and wiped out a lot of the native population here. Mm -hmm. We got them back. <laughs> they uh, took, took some of the, uh, the, the, the cuttings and vines from America thinking that they could take them over to uh, Europe and of course the European vines were, uh, you know, did, didn't have the uh, proper stuff in order to fight the diseases that they carried over so they ended up having to uh, dig up a lot of the rootstocks uh, and, and a lot of them were, were Herbiemont and, uh, you know, and graft them onto the, uh, the, the shafts or whatever of the, uh, the vines over there so a lot of the European vines are, are, are really a hybrid so they're not pure. Interesting. So now, when you go to make the wine, you have the grapes, you have the, then you end up with the grape juice. And uh, is this process automated, or how how does this work, Laura? You want to tell us a little bit about? Does it you because uh, you, you were saying one day your processor was down and you jumped in there and tried to squish the grapes yourself? Yeah, we have a crusher to simmer that we use initially. So we cool the grapes down and we process them, you know, pick out you know the ones that don't look real good and we put it through the uh, crusher to simmer and then it goes up into an auger pipe where the um, the grapes are crushed at one end and then the juice flows back down and then we pump the juice into the vats at that time okay yeah. but we have to like check the sugar content a lot of tasting going on yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's actually when, when you're bottling it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But, um, and, and then then what is the process after that? I mean, if you, Richard, what do you well, do? This you basically, you know, you need to, uh, we, we, we use uh, potassium metasulfite, which is a, uh, a steroid. Actually, you need to kill the, the natural yeast because grapes don't have natural yeast. Uh, so, so you want a, more of a control. I know a, a lot of the, uh, the grandparents used to have uh, these jugs of, of muscadine wine down in their basements and just kept pouring sugar to it and with the natural yeast, but we have to have a little better control on it. Uh, so, so we uh, you know, use the chemicals to kill the natural yeast, uh, make sure that the, uh, the, the sugar content is like at a 22 bricks uh, or 1.090 on the hydrometer scale, uh, so that when you add the yeast to it, uh, it equals to about, about a 12% alcohol rate. So, so once the yeast has eaten all the sugar, uh, and you have it, uh, you know, down to a zero dry. At, at that point, you know, it's just a matter of uh, making sure that uh, the oxygen doesn't get too, too much to it, and that uh, you know, age it for a little while. Uh, and then what you want to do is to uh, kill, you know, the yeast. And and, uh, and so uh, you know, you, you kill kill what's there so it won't keep fermenting, okay. uh, because you you don't want uh, sparkling. Uh, Sparkling wine. Sparkling, Sparkling wine. wine. <laughs> On the proper top. Yeah, there you go. I mean, if you have a champagne top, you're okay, but just a cork, you, you don't want them to blow. Right, exactly. Well, you know, this is what we're talking about this afternoon. We're talking about the Ennery River vineyards down there in Newberry, and we're going to continue talking about this. We're going to get them to tell us more about some of their wines and some of the other things they do down there. You know, if you're looking for a place to have a nice uh, family reunion or maybe you'd like to have your wedding at a vineyard, think about it, folks. We're going to talk more about it when we come back. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us. 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be right back. Arg, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. 
and so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. All right, we're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery, and we are talking about the Emory River Vineyards. 18 acres that was a former cow patch, and now <laughs> it's a, a vineyard. You know, when you look over that, your property, I mean, that has to be phenomenal to look out there. Laura, what do you think when you look out over there and you see all this hard work and you've told me, you know, you've had a lot of help, and but still yeah. all the work and everything. How do, you, how do you feel when you look out over it? Um, it just makes you feel really honored that you live in such a beautiful place and we can go to our backyard and watch the bluebirds and, you know, the all the rest of the birds and all the little animals running around it's yeah. and it's real peaceful it's real quiet we have a the property goes you know for probably about eight acres before you actually hit a lot of trees and so it kind of acts you know it's a buffer right. so we don't hear even though we're pretty close to the interstate we don't really hear the traffic right. but it's just real peaceful well, it's neat. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the idea is that um, you sell directly to the public. Is that what you do, Laura? Yeah, pretty much. Probably 98, 99%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much people, to the public. Are people yeah. coming to us, you know, from all over South Carolina and from other states, too, as they travel? Sure. Now, do you have uh, you have a website? Do you do Facebook, too, or you yeah, have a website? Yeah, we have uh, Facebook, Henry River Vineyards. Henry River Vineyards. So if you'd like to look that up, make sure you go there and check it out. Now, you're not very far from Greenwood. You're down there in Newberry. How long did it take you to get up here today, Richard, roughly? 35 minutes. 35 minutes. minutes. Yeah, and now and also it's neat because right down there, of course, you have the Newberry Opera House. You have all this fine dining, and then you have, uh, and then you have the orchid farm down there Farming too. Orchid homes, yeah, oh, yeah. it's a big, big orchid place. In sure. Fact, in fact, we send a lot of people that way, and they send a lot of people our way. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool. Yeah, and, and we send a lot of people uh, you know, who, who are coming to, to you know, uh, man, a lot of our business is from Chapin, Lexington, uh, you know, the Columbia area, and so we we we, we want to send them downtown. They enjoy you know the antiques and the restaurants or the opera house or whatever, sure. and then also you know colored homes. There are a few things to do in Newberry, and it's, it's a it's, it's a pleasant little town. You know, Greenwood has probably done a little bit better. Not not saying negative or anything about Newberry as far as their downtown area. Mm -hmm. uh, Greenwood's done a really nice job, uh, along with Green Bowl has done a really nice job. Well, we've been able to pattern it after yeah. others, so yeah. that's that's a nice thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, that, like I said, y'all have done a really good job down here in the downtown. And so we like to send people to our downtown area to, to help promote the downtown business. Sure. Now, um, now, what type of facilities do you have there, Laura? Because I mean, you have you've had weddings there, and you do family reunions. What type of facilities are available there? Uh, well, we've got a basement area, and then we've got what we call the upper room. Uh, the upper room is about sixteen hundred square feet, mm -hmm. and so just this past weekend, we had probably forty. People there, there's just a group of people having a sit down meal. Mm -hmm. So, and people can bring in food or how do you Yeah, this we work? allow people to bring in food. They can bring in, you know, cheese and crackers and grapes or, or whatever they grapes. like. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> grapes! <laughs> Well, I just you said yeah. they have a sit-down meal, so do yeah. they, they're they can cater. We've had it cater. people catered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had uh, people. The weddings that have been outside usually. Mm -hmm. um, we've had just huge tents set up in the middle of the vineyard. Mm -hmm. It had a, a platform at the dance floor, chandeliers hanging from the tent. This is amazing I mean, what they're doing with tents oh, yeah, today. Yeah. Isn't it? In fact, uh, Leanna Hall from uh, 96 uh, had her wedding there. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. very cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I guess that must be a, a lot of fun to do. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And that, that's one of the most um, enjoyable parts of owning the winery is just meeting all the different people and becoming friends with them. Now, if somebody wants more information, can they call you? Uh, what would be the way to get in touch with you? Well, you can email us, uh, interrivervineyards at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, they can call us. Um, Telephone number is? 803-276-2855. And then we're also going to be having a harvest festival on October 13th. October 13th, is that a Friday? Or that Sunday. is a Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. okay. Yeah, so we'll have local musicians, yes. and actually we're going to have a Cityscape Winery will be there also with their wines. 
So oh. we'll actually have wines from two different wineries now in South Carolina. Is, where, where are they? Located? They are in Pelzer. Pelzer, yeah. Right up the road on the other side of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, side. they participate here in your uh, Festival of Flowers, right. too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you have participated in the Festival of Flowers, correct? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, been for three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. And how have you found the experience with the Festival of Flowers? It, it's been, uh, you know, the one thing that's really nice about the, you know, the, the, the winery business is, is the people uh, who, who you know, drink wine, like wine. Uh, there's, there's a wine culture out there, there's no doubt about it. And uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people are just, just really nice people. So, so if you, you know, like talking to, to people and enjoying you know, people's company, it, it's a great business to be in. And we, we really enjoy the people from the uh, uh, Greenwood area. And we, you know, just, it's, it's, it's real pleasant. So you must have been on the wine walk, yes? The wine yeah. walk, is that what you were doing? And did you do anything else? Did you do any other events here with the winery? Or was that the one you're talking about? Yeah, that's the one we're talking oh, about. The Festival of Flowers, yeah. yeah. The wine walk. Yeah. Wine walk. Yeah. I'm not sure which one it is. The but wine walk, yes. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> you provided wine and people yeah. enjoyed it. Well, that, that's terrific. So October 13th, and what's that going to be called? It's our harvest festival. Harvest. What does that and mean? I, Will you actually be harvesting grapes then? Well, we'll try to save out some. We should have a few grapes yeah, still left over. Are you going to so. have a grape stock for all of those yeah. that want well, to Well, we've about? had a large number of people to ask us about stomping on the grapes. If I'll even pay money to stomp mm -hmm. on grapes. So, <laughs> so it's, it's definitely something that we're going to consider. <laughs> and are people going to do it in their bare feet? That's what I want to know. That, you know well, that's sure. Story. I mean, you know, you, you may as well. I mean, we're not going to, of course, make anything with Maybe the juice that comes out. That's what I've been concerned yeah. about. You know, when you think about that Lucy episode, yeah. all you think about are the feet in there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, uh, so that's neat. All right, well, the number again, 803-276-2855. You should give them a call. You should go down there and visit their facility. Now, are you open every day or just on the weekends? We're How? open Wednesday through Saturday, 11 to 6, okay. and Sunday, 2 to 6. Okay. We just recently started opening on Sunday, probably eight weeks ago. And how's that doing? It's doing pretty well. Yeah. yeah. It's doing yeah, pretty well. Do. Our, our, our marketing effort is, is lacking in different areas. <laughs> it's, it's You're like, into the wine yeah. too much. That's the problem, Richard. <laughs> it's like people say, well, on your internet, you said you had this wine. I always have to say, well, don't believe everything you read on the internet. internet. Yeah, there you go. Now, but you also get the grapes, and this is one thing I wanted to talk yeah. I mean, the juice from different areas. Um, mm -hmm. You were telling me about that earlier. Laura, can you tell us a little bit more yeah, about that? Yeah, in the springtime we choose um, juice from Chile. So the grapes are actually grown mm -hmm. in, in Chile. Chile. And then we get the juice that's frozen in 55 gallon drums. And then we thaw it and we use it to make the wine. In the fall we get juices from Italy. Mm -hmm. So we have a large list of different grapes to choose from. Right. So that means that every two, three, four months the wine list totally changes. So, so every time somebody comes back, they'll have something different to try. You know, that, that is interesting because uh, just because you had it last year doesn't necessarily mean it'll be this year. And right. do, doesn't the, um, the soil and, and everything, the weather and everything, affect the quality of the grapes, which is going to affect yeah. the, the yeah. wine? Yeah. yeah, every year. Every year will be different. Have, have you had a, what you considered a particularly good year, Richard? Well, we uh, actually, by, by, by fluke, I guess you might say, our, our noble, which is the uh, red muscan, two years ago, uh, we, when we put the skins to it, it gets a real deep red color. Mm -hmm. And the, this past year, what we did is we, we put them in, in bags, and you know, so we squeezed them and pushed it down their hands, and it came out more of a blush uh, you know, color and, and, and texture and flavor. And uh, actually, two years ago, our, our deep red noble didn't sell hardly at all. And this year, our blush has sold very good. <laughs> so, so we're going to try and repeat that process. <laughs> is it trial and error, though? Is it just happenstance, or can you actually control where it's going to be blush versus the deep red? Well, I guess as we get uh, more experience, more years <laughs> under our belt, we'll right. be able to decide to do it this way or that way, or which way was better in previous years. Sure. Whereas, you know, now it's pretty much, oh, 
well, this this worked out well. You know? <laughs> well, do you keep notes on what you did? Oh, yeah, yeah, we keep notes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, well, we are here with Richard and Laura Labar, and the number to call them at the Ennery River Vineyards is 803-276-2855. They also have a Facebook page, and they have a website, so make sure you check all that out. If you're getting ready to plan a wedding or an event and you're looking for a cool, cool venue, you might consider it down there in Newberry. It's only about 30 minutes away. It could be a destination wedding. Hey, we'll be right back. Don't you go away. Well, I just learned something very interesting right here. Not only do they do the muscadine grapes that they actually grow, but you know, when you're in the wine business, you got to get all the different types of wine. I just found out, you told me, Laura, you have a cranberry wine for uh, Thanksgiving and the holidays. That's very popular. Oh, yeah. It is very popular. And we've learned after two years that we need to double the amount that we make <laughs> this year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, you were talking about strawberries and blackberries. And what, do you have mangoes right now? Yeah, we have mango and peach and red raspberry is our three fruit wines. And our fruit wines are just that particular juice fermented. Mm -hmm. So we don't use grape juice and artificial, you know, flavor and color. It's the actual so juice. It's the real thing. Yeah, it's the real thing. Yeah. So you were telling me you get uh, blackberries out of North Carolina? Yeah, we, we were, I guess, you know, unfortunate for people in North Carolina, the blackberry business in North Carolina, but fortunate for us, uh, we, we uh, found out that this one, one blackberry farm up there uh, was actually throwing away blackberries because they sold to Walmart and if it wasn't perfect, they, you know, they couldn't do anything with them. So I was able to go up there and get 500 pounds of uh, blackberries and uh, they're, they're, they're fermenting now. Fermenting now, yes. <laughs> yes. So we're going to have lots of blackberry wine, right? We yeah. will have uh, some blackberry wine soon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, when, when you go to bottle it now, Laura, though, what kind of, do you have an automatic bottler? And then, of course, there's, a, of course, putting the corks in and all this kind of stuff. Um, is this a hand, press, hand procedure? Oh, yeah, pretty much. It's one by one. Okay. We have a, a filter that we use to filter the wines. And then, uh, pretty much, it used to be that we used the old system where it took about a, a complete minute just about to fill one bottle. But now we actually have a little better system and we get a full bottle probably within about 10, 15 seconds. Wow. And then of course you hand, hand push that cork back in. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to, used to, and here recently we've kind of upgraded. And okay. so now all I have to do is punch a little button. And it pushes yeah, the cork and in the cork there. Yeah. goes right in. And then we hand label wow. and we put the caps on by hand, wow. one by one. So there's a lot of labor in this. So how much does a 750 milliliter bottle cost? All, all of our wines are $13. Uh, we, we try and uh, follow the KISS method. And so it just makes it easier. They're all the same price, $13. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, it's keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> That's what KISS stands for, right? Yeah, there you go. All right, well, um, $13, $13 a bottle. now. But let me just ask now, people, they can't really order it. They have to come to your winery. Is that correct? We, we've decided that, that uh, you know, as far as the shipping, you, you know, it, it, there's a lot of laws, you right. know, as far as with, where you can ship, what state you can ship and everything else. And uh, so it's just easier for us, you might say. And, mm -hmm. and plus, it, you know, it, shipping is expensive. Sure. Uh, and, and so it's just easier for us uh, to, to have people, you know, come by there. Now, if they want to buy... The, you know, case of wine and ship it themselves. Sure. You know, they're more than welcome to do that. But uh, it, it's, it's like it's just easier for them to just to come and get it. Sure. Okay. All right. So people of Greenwood, you will have to go down there to, and buy it and enjoy. Now, do you do tastings down there? Do people get to taste your wine or? Yeah, we, we are actually charge for tastings. We charge five dollars a person mm -hmm. uh, for, for tasting, and we have about seven or eight wines that, that you taste. Uh, and then uh, if, if you want to keep a souvenir glass, uh, it's an extra two dollars. And if you want to you know, have a glass of wine uh, and go sit on the deck mm -hmm. overlooking the vineyard, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Or if you want to purchase a uh, bottle of uh, wine for thirteen dollars, you can take that bottle of wine and go sit on the deck or sit, <laughs> sit out in the field area that we have. Right. Uh, and, and have to bring a little picnic basket with you or something like that. The only thing we, re we request is that you don't bring any other alcohol in. 
if you want to bring some water or some soda or something like that, or a Coke, you're more than welcome. Just no more alcohol. Just, if you're going to buy alcohol, it's going to be from y'all. Correct. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I understand that totally. Well, you know, um, Richard, as you look back over this uh, seven-year experience, experiment, uh, experience, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> that you've had, what do you see for the future with your winery? you plan to continue to grow it, or what do you think? Well, I, I think what we want to do is, is mainly push into the uh, having having as a designated spot where people come and enjoy themselves. Uh, that you know, for weddings, parties, uh, we, we need to expand our marketing more into the uh, you know the bridal shower uh, area. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there are two different models of uh, wineries. One, one is trying to get your wine out to distributors or to the wholesalers and to the retailers, something like that. And then another model is uh, you know more of a de designated. Plenty where, where people come in, you know, the wine is, is more of an experience. Sure. And so, so we that, that's that's the, the model that we want to follow. And uh, we, you know, we've uh, good friends of ours, uh, uh, Wayne and Anita Tammy, who owns Cityscape. You know, they're they're very, very good friends. They're they're starting to follow the other model, uh, where they're going to start working with with the wholesaler, trying to get their you know wines out into the market. That, that, that's not the model that we want to follow. Because you realize how much work that is more than happy to have them do the work. <laughs> <laughs> we want to party. You want to, party. You, you want to uh, ha have people come out and enjoy the, uh, the uh, venue that you have right there. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, we just visit a lot of wineries, and if you notice a lot of wineries you go to, there, there's no place to sit. Uh, you, you'll stand at a, you know, a little bar type area, you might say, and then they do the tasting. It's almost like they want you to do the tastings, pay your money, and get out. Sure. Whereas Laura and I, when we uh, first started this many years ago, you know, we wanted it to people could come and enjoy themselves, and so we have some you know tables that they can sit at or they can sit at the bar that we have too, and uh, you know do their tasting and just just really enjoy themselves. Just with you know like the, you know we, we produce the best wines in the Midlands. Uh, of course, now we're the only winery in the Midlands. <laughs> But but also you know we don't have to tell you <laughs> bad marketing Richard no you're the best winery there you go <laughs> but, but 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 also as far as a place in you know vineyard you know you don't have to go to California or anything like that to to go out and have a good time at a vineyard uh, you can you know, you're right right there in Newberry South Carolina which is uh, you know we're, we're a half mile off the interstate so it's easy to get to and easy to get back on the interstate or go wherever you want to uh, so we we've got an excellent location. And we have a lot of really good wines, and uh, you know we, we like people to come out and enjoy themselves. And you are open Wednesday through Saturday, eleven to six, and you just started opening on Sundays. Is that right, Laura? Yeah, that's and what correct. What hours on Sunday? Sunday from two to six. From two to six, so uh, you can really go down there. And I like the idea of doing a picnic, particularly as we start going into fall. I think that could be really, really nice to. Uh, take a picnic and uh, have a good time down there or go down there, see a show, stay overnight and go to the winery the next afternoon mm -hmm. on Sunday afternoon or something. Yeah, we, we even have it, uh, one of the nice restaurants uh, downtown, Stephen W's, if you purchase a bottle of our wine and take it to, to the restaurant, they do not charge you a corkage fee. Oh. Uh, so, so we have a little you know, relationship with the, uh, that, that restaurant and, and it you know, works out very well. Our wines are three uh, $13, uh, their corkage fee is 10 <laughs> and, and if you want to buy a glass of wine there, it's seven or eight. <laughs> That's a deal, folks. That's a deal. So go pick out your own wine. Go down there. See Richard and Laura Labar right down there at Ennery River Vineyards. You'll be glad you did. If you go into an event or something, pick up a couple of bottles of wine. Take one bottle in and, uh, and have it at uh, Stephen W's. And you'll be saving money and you'll be having an experience, too. And, you know, I think the older we get, the more we want to have experiences in life. What do you think, Richard? As, a, as an old person, yes. As, yeah, <laughs> so that's why I asked you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Laura is still working her day job. Laura, what would, be, what, would be the, uh, what would you like to be able to do futuristically as far as the winery and everything? Would you like to be able to give up your day job? or? <sighs> No, not that. right now. I love teaching school. I wanted to be a school teacher since um, I was in high school, wow. and I went back to the same high school where I graduated. Right. So I, I enjoy teaching. You enjoy and, teaching. You know, I plan on staying there until I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. And then, I, I, do you have a habit of going home and having a glass of wine after work? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More than one. Okay. All right. Well, you know that's.
that's what, that's one of the beauties of having your own winery, right? I mean, you have to taste these and make sure they're good, don't you, Richard? Uh, yeah, well, you know, the, the one thing nice about, about our wines, uh, we, we have a, a wide variety. Uh, for example, right now we have a Pinot Grigio uh, for the people who want a dry white wine. Uh, we have a Moscato, which is kind of like a uh, semi-sweet uh, or semi-dry uh, white wine. And then we have our Noble Muscadine, which is, you know, sweet. And then we have a Pinot Noir and a Malbec, which are two dry reds. And then we also have a red raspberry, a peach, and a mango, which are sweet fruit wines. So you will find something that you like. <laughs> so all you got to do is make the trip down there to Newberry to the Ennery River Vineyards. Give them a call, 803-276-2855. You can also see them on Facebook, and you can check out their website, uh, Richard and Laura Labar. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much for coming here on WCRS. Yeah, it's our pleasure Thank to be you. here in Greenwood. Well, absolutely. I understand you're having dinner here, so that's a bonus <laughs> for Greenwood. Hey, this is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody.